As you may be aware, our God is a victorious God. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God's ultimate victory over death, hell, and the grave has been secured. That is the ultimate good news of the gospel. And I think every day is a good day to remind ourselves of this biblical truth, that we serve a victorious king, therefore we are victorious. I think we all agree we like to be on the winning side. And speaking of winning, any sports fan knows that March is the month of madness. College basketball's end of the year mega tournament is affectionately known as March Madness, and it's in full swing right now. Part of the excitement of this tournament are the matchups between the bigger, more well-known superior teams and the smaller, lesser known underdogs. When one of these underdog teams actually pulls off a stunning victory, it's called an upset. Maybe because the other fan base is so upset about losing to a lesser opponent. But this isn't just a sports world theme. It's also a repetitive biblical theme. God loves the underdog. He loves to bring victory out of situations that look insurmountable and lost. Hence, why we still love to use biblical metaphors like David and Goliath when we describe modern competitions that look impossible for the representative David to win. However, when it comes to people's lives, God intervenes in miraculous ways to bring victory out of the jaws of defeat. One of the reasons he does this is so that he is the only one who can get the glory because it's very clear he is the only one who won the victory. When it comes to our own lives, we often pray for God to break through in difficult, insurmountable areas or circumstances in our lives. We might even pray and prophesy verses like Romans 8.28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who's been called according to his purpose. This is such an amazing promise. I've prayed it often. But let me give you a caution as well. God doesn't bring victory to hardened hearts. He brings victory to broken, contrite, surrendered hearts. Why is it that we oftentimes expect victory from a place where God is not present? Romans is clear that our hearts must belong to God if all things are going to work out for our good. We can't ask God to help us, the underdog, defeat the giants in our lives if we are unwilling to surrender all of our hearts to him. If our hearts are hardened, then anything that grows out of that is a counterfeit. It's a fake plant. It's dead with no life. But if we want to see a victory, if we want to walk in the freedom Christ died for, then we will humble ourselves, allow the word of God to water and soften our hearts, allow the gifts given to the church in the people around us to till up the ground of our lives and watch God bring victory out of defeat. Here's something else. When Romans 8.28 speaks of things working for good, know this. Our good will be good for the name of God. Our good will be a benefit to others. Our God will be a benefit to Jesus' bride, the church. If not, then it's not a good victory. It isn't a victory. I don't know what you're facing today, but I want to encourage you to humble yourselves under the mighty and loving hand of God. Surrender your situations and heart to Him and let Him win the victory in your life that you desperately need. God knows a thing or two about buzzer beaters. He made the ultimate one when Jesus rose from the dead. And he can do the same in your life as well if you give him your heart. Would you do that today? Give God your heart.